So many people are still facing effects from the pandemic and the lockdowns when it comes to their health and fitness. I know that I deal with women who have really had a hard time just getting their bodies back where they want it, getting the motivation to get back into the gym and get back onto their diet and training. The Espen Clinical Nutritional Journal reports the following shocking statistic. During the COVID-19 pandemic, individuals' body weight and total food consumption increased by 51% and 57.2% respectively. There's been an increase of screen time, sleeping time, and decreased physical activity, which were all associated with weight gain. But you know what is also shockingly and alarmingly increased? Orthorexia nervosa. This morning, I woke up to the news of Dawson's Creek actor, Ove Ndefo, died at the age of 51. And his family put out a statement that he died of heart failure due to orthorexia nervosa, and that they want to get the word out about this debilitating disease, which honestly does not get talked about enough. But we're going to talk about that today on this episode of Redefining Bodybuilding. When people think about eating disorders, orthorexia is probably not one that comes to mind. I mean, of course, we think about anorexia, which is more about food restriction or binge eating disorder, which is more about compulsive overeating. But orthorexia has a really crazy, insidious root to it. And if you're not paying attention, you would totally miss it, not only in other people, but in yourself as well. Orthorexia is the obsession and the compulsion to eat healthily. And in many cases, to exercise to excessive levels. It's so easy to mask this mental illness because when you see people who decide to embark on taking care of themselves, you may not think that this super healthy diet and all the tracking and all the training that they're doing is fueled by an eating disorder. Now, let's look at the case of Ovi Ndefo. He has an incredible story in and of itself. Successful actor in Hollywood, someone who took care of themselves, seems like his whole life. And in 2019, he was involved in a horrific accident. He was in the parking lot of a local grocery store and was involved in a catastrophic collision with an SUV that ran right into him and his parked car, severing one of his legs immediately on the scene, crushing the other, which had to be eventually amputated. His life changed in an instant. At the time, he was teaching yoga, so he was someone who was taking care of his health anyway. I found this amazing article and interview that he did with the LA Times. So let's go ahead and just take a quick look at that. This actor and yoga teacher, whose legs were amputated in a horrific hit and run crash, refuses to let anything slow him down. I wasn't gonna let, you know, amputations of my legs stop me. You know? Get me another one! Obi and Defo appeared in Star Trek Deep Space Nine and was a series regular on Dawson's Creek. At a commanding six feet, four inches tall, he was a force to be reckoned with on Stargate SG-1. So this is right where, right where I was hit. Obi was loading groceries into his parked car when he was struck by a suspected drunk driver. My right leg was severed instantly and the left had to be amputated above the knee uh, at the hospital about half an hour later. Footage from the scene shows his car's crumpled bumper and a pool of blood where he was standing. It was horrible, but um, I, I, in some ways I was fine. The doctors couldn't believe it. They it couldn't believe miracle, that you yeah. pulled through. Yeah. It was a miracle he survived. And, and what he did on, next on, was just uh, as incredible. I made the decision to not, not do pain medication. Here he is working out six weeks after losing his legs. Nine weeks after the accident, he was back to yoga. Today, he displays extraordinary strength and determination. Incredibly, he calls losing his legs an opportunity to do something more with his life. An opportunity to keep working, to keep creating as an actor and a writer, and to find new opportunities, and to hopefully you know, be a beacon of light to others. What an incredible story of just strength and resilience and just taking on challenges and going headfirst into deciding that you are going to succeed in your life. You're going to not let a tragedy stop you. Now, fast forward, I haven't really seen very many interviews or anything like that of him in more recent time. I saw a couple of things online where he was talking about his career, but nothing specifically where it was getting into his health. So it's interesting to see what his family saw 
and how they came to the conclusion that his obsession with his health was a driving factor behind his death and having a heart attack. Now, what's interesting is the mention of orthorexia and its rise during the COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, a 2021 study came out looking at this exact thing and the rise of eating disorders, body image, and how social media is fueling all of that for so many individuals during that time and beyond. Before we continue this conversation, make sure that you stop for a moment and you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're watching this on YouTube. And hey, listen, I started a podcast over on Spotify. And so if you want to be able to listen in on the go, go ahead and make sure that you follow me on Spotify. That link is down in the description. If you're a woman out there who's looking to take her training nutrition to the next level and do it the healthy and smart way that you can do for the long term, honey, guess what? I am taking on new clients right now in my coaching program. Go ahead and scan the QR code that you see right there on your screen and request a complimentary clarity call. And finally, even if you're not looking to work with me right now, but you want to get some tips sent to you directly by email and make sure that you do not miss anything that I got to help you to get into the best shape of your life absolutely for free, honey, get on my email list. Go ahead and scan that QR code that you see right there on your screen. Now let's go ahead and jump back into this very important conversation. So from the Frontiers in Psychology Journal, this study was released in 2021. The effects of the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown on eating, body image, and social media habits among women with and without symptoms of orthorexia nervosa. The COVID-19 pandemic is negatively impacting people's mental health worldwide. The current study examined the effects of COVID-19 lockdown on adult women's eating, body image, and social media habits. Furthermore, we compared individuals with and without signs of orthorexia nervosa, a proposed eating disorder. Participants were 143 women, ages 17 to 73, recruited during a COVID-19 lockdown in Canada from May to June 2020. Participants completed self-report questionnaires on their eating, body image, and social media habits during the pandemic. The Eating Habits Questionnaire, which we'll call EHQ from here forward, assessed symptoms of orthorexia nervosa. Compared to the period prior to lockdown, Women with higher total orthorexia nervosa scores reported eating a lot more than usual, feeling greater pressure to diet and lose weight, thinking about food more often than usual, experiencing greater weight gain, and perceiving more pressure from social media specifically to lose weight and to exercise compared to their healthy counterparts. We examined associations between individual EHQ subscales and perceived changes to eating and weight. Women who scored high on EHQ problems reported seeing more weight loss content on their social media than those who reported fewer orthorexia symptoms. Conversely, those who scored low on EHQ feelings reported feeling a lot less pressure to lose weight, somewhat less or a lot less pressure to lose weight or to exercise from social media specifically and trended towards less laxative use during lockdown compared to those who scored higher on orthorexia nervosa. So basically, those women who were already experiencing symptoms of this, who are already in the throes of excessive focus on healthy eating and exercise, well, they were seeing more of that on their social media feed, which would fuel them going even deeper into their disorder than women who didn't. Together, the findings suggest that women with symptoms of orthorexia are experiencing an exacerbation of disordered eating thoughts and behaviors during COVID-19 and that social media may be a contributing factor. As I've worked with women past the lockdowns and all that stuff, I see women struggling with body image, struggling to get off weight that they gained during the lockdowns, struggling with trying to find normalcy again, and some are somewhat obsessed with eating in some degree. Whether it's turning to food for emotional eating, trying to control every morsel that goes into their body through symptoms of anorexia or those who can't control their eating through binge eating disorder. These things are absolutely on the rise in our culture. And again, the dangerous thing about orthorexia is that it's kind of like the hitting eating disorder. Whereas because you're training, because you're dieting, because you're taking care of yourself and being healthy, it's not necessarily seen as a problem. And the scary thing about it, ladies out there, gentlemen out there, if you have young kids, especially in this case, your daughters, 
being on social media, they're going through the same thing too. Here's another study that took a look at a young 13 year old girl who was diagnosed with orthorexia. So this is published in January, 2023 from the journal Curious. A case of eating disorder diagnosed as orthorexia nervosa. A 13 year old girl presented to our hospital with chief complaints of rapid weight loss, fatigue, discomfort, chills in the extremities and alopecia. We initially suspected anorexia nervosa. However, she did not express fear of gaining weight or have a distorted perception of her weight or body shape. Thus, her presentation was not typical of anorexia nervosa. We also suspected avoided restrictive food intake disorder, but she did not exhibit any food avoidance behaviors. However, she was obsessed with nutritional control, so we diagnosed her with orthorexia nervosa. The incidence of orthorexia has increased during the COVID-19 pandemic. In this case, her obsession was brought about by information she read in magazines and on social media that promoted an unbalanced diet centered almost exclusively on vegetables. All of you on those raw vegan diets, all of you on those plant-based diets, all of you who might be on those carnivore type of diets, anything that is so restrictive that you can only eat one thing, yeah, guess what? You might have a problem with orthorexia. And I'm sorry to say it, but we gotta pull the bandaid off here. Now, here's the crazy thing. The American Psychiatric Society has not yet recognized orthorexia as a mental disorder. So it is not included in the DSM-5. That's the thing about the social media stuff is that you are not impervious to it, that we are all influenced by all this stuff. Seeing the latest fad, the latest diet, the latest shake, the latest tea, the latest gimmick, the latest gadget, whatever, the quick fix to get to where you wanna to get to. And even when you don't think that you're doing the quick fix, if you're falling into the trap of these diets and these programs that promote extremes in either direction and showing these magical results, all while not showing you the consequences of the people that fail on these diets, that fail on these training programs, or anyone who's keeping stuff off for the long term, you're falling for this hook, line, and sinker, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on products, on programs, on coaches, and none of these folks have your best interest at heart. Now I'm all for taking care of your diet and training, but you gotta do it in a way that's balanced. You gotta do it in a way that's not gonna leave you obsessed. If you feel like this is not fitting into your lifestyle and this is not something that you can do from today to the day you die, honey, you're on the wrong program. Now I will say there are some people out there who are a select few where a very restrictive diet is important for their overall health. For instance, you have people who deal with epilepsy and seizures. Well, research has shown that having a low carbohydrate diet that's high in fat is fantastic for them to help to control seizures. Those of you who are dealing with insulin resistance and obesity, the same kind of diet might help you to improve your insulin sensitivity and to control hormones in a way to help you to lose weight versus a high carbohydrate diet. Some of you choose the plant-based route because you feel that eating meat and dairy and other things don't bode well with your digestive system. Same thing with the carnivore diet. And, and I don't want to discourage people from trying things and seeing what might work well for you. But if you get into the habit of trying things and then you completely forego entire food groups to the point where you villainize food, food is bad, you can't ever indulge and have certain things, there's no flexibility in the approach to dieting, and you're super obsessed with counting your calories, you start getting to a point of restriction when it comes to macros and food variety goes out the door, vitamin and mineral deficiency increase, you are treading down the wrong path. Orthorexia isn't something that's an isolated thing. It's on the rise according to these studies. And it, age is not a factor in it as well. Anyone can fall victim to this. So I want you to take a step back and ask yourself, what are your motivations when it comes to what you're doing in the gym or if you're working out at home, however you're getting those workouts in and how you're eating? Do you feel like counting calories in your diet and your training completely take over your life where there's no balance? Have you eliminated entire food groups and macros not because your body needs it or there's something that is wrong and in a state of dis-ease 
that is alleviated from following these super restrictive plans, but no, you're following it because of a vanity reason and purpose. Then I'm gonna need you to take a step back and look at ways that you can do this better and healthier. Look at ways how you can do these things for the long run. If you're spending hours upon hours in the gym, whether it's doing weight training or cardio, are you training every single day? You might want to take a step back to see if what you're doing is more detrimental in the long run. So you're creating this perfect environment for your body to just completely shut down and stop. And once it does that, honey, let me tell you something, weight loss, gaining muscle, changing your body, it's going to be impossible. So I want to just plant in you today the inspiration to be smarter about your approach. But what are your thoughts? Let's go ahead and start something in the comments because I think that our community is a place where we can learn from each other, get resources, heal, and really get a sense of having support, not feeling so alone out there. Let's be honest for a second. Are you someone who fell victim to the social media influencers? Are you a little too obsessed with your body, your training, your diet? Did you lose your motivation during the pandemic to the point to whereas you got so obsessed about getting back on that now you're doing a little bit too much? Have you been struggling mentally to get back on? Go ahead to the comments and share your story below. Let's go ahead and see if we can get some support for each other and who knows, some support for you. I watch out for those comments and I try to lend my advice as much as I can. In the meantime, I really want you to feel motivated. So check out this video right over here so that way you can train and eat the smart way and still see results. I'll see you over there.